Hello, this is Dr. Hena Asil, and today we're talking about infrared radiation and uh, how to use it to deduce uh, molecular structures. This is for IAS at Excel Chemistry. Okay, so we know that infrared is a region in the spectrum which is right next to the visible. It's just above the red end of the visible light. And some substances can absorb the IR radiation. Now, when molecules absorb the IR radiation, they change their polarity when they vibrate. So a compound like carbon dioxide, for example, can absorb IR radiation, uh, change its polarity, and this can be recorded on uh, a spectrum that shows peaks at specific uh, sections of the uh, spectrum at specific wave numbers. And the presence of these peaks uh, can be used to identify the compound. Now, only molecules which can change their polarity as they vibrate can absorb IR radiation. So, for example, molecules of water, we said CO2, methane, NO, these can absorb IR radiation. But molecules such as oxygen and nitrogen do not absorb IR radiation. Now, each functional group in a molecule gives a characteristic peak at a specific wavelength. So, for example, what we will be having is we will have a spectrum like this, and our job is to decide if it has a certain structure by the presence of certain peaks. So, notice that, for example, this is ethanol. Can you see the peak for the OH? So, if I look at a spectrum and I find a peak, a broad peak like that in that area, uh, 3,300, uh, that means that this must be an alcohol. Now, if we're looking for other things, we will look for peaks at other uh, wave numbers. So, you will be provided with this. But it's always a good idea to know what you're looking for so that you don't spend time looking all through this table, but you will have this table in front of you. Now, let us take a look at what we should be looking for. If I have an acid, I must have a peak for OH at around 3300 or uh, 2500 or in between. So, can you see the peak for the OH? Always look in that area, around 3000. If we have a peak in that area, that means I have either an alcohol or an acid because the OH will give a peak in that area. Now, if this is an acid, that means it also has, in addition to the OH, it has a C double bond O. Now, C double bond O will always give you a strong peak at around 1700 or 1720. So that long peak at 1721 indicates that I have a C double bond O. So that means that this is a compound that has a C double bond O and an OH that indicates that it must be a carboxylic acid. Are we paying attention? It's very easy if you just look in that area. At around 1720, you should have a big peak. That means I have a C double bond O. If you don't have a peak, long strong peak in that area then there is no c double bond o oh is very clear in that area around 3000 you should have a broad peak at uh, around 3000 that would indicate the presence of oh presence of both these peaks indicates carboxylic acid but can you see the peak for the alcohol there is no peak at around uh, 1700 like the previous spectrum there is only a peak at around 3300 that is an alcohol. Are we paying attention? Okay. Ketone. Ketone is something that has a C double bond O. No OH is nothing. The C double bond O is in the middle of the compound. 
So all you're looking for is a peak at the C double bond O, that is the peak at around 1710 or 1720. That strong peak indicates the presence of C double bond O. So if I have that peak only and no peak for OH, do you remember where the peak for the OH was? Something around 3000 should be broad and very clear at that area, around 3000. There is no peak in that area for OH, so this means that I have only C double bond O, that means I have a ketone. An aldehyde would have C double bond O, but can you see what it has before 3000? It doesn't have a peak at 3300 like the other one, so there is no peak for OH, but there is a peak for the CH that is next to the C double bond O. So this small peaks on top at around 2800, 2900, these indicate the presence of aldehyde in addition to the peak for the C double bond. So let's take a look at a typical question. He says the infrared spectrum for one of these compounds is given below and he's, he gives you this table, OH for alcohols are in this range, CH alkanes and so on are in this range. So he gives you specific uh, wave numbers and he's asking okay this spectrum that we have is for which of these compounds well looking at it I can see that there is no OH there is no broad peak for the alcohol so it is not an alcohol it's not A or B now could it be butanol yes because there is a peak for the C double bond O the peak for the C double bond O at around 1740 or 1700, yes, we have. So it could be either C or D. So is it an aldehyde, butanol, or a ketone, butanone? We said the aldehyde has these three, these peaks, tiny peaks at around before 3000. So these are the weak peaks for the CH of the aldehyde. So this is uh, butanol. Now, another spectrum, which of the following could be produced, uh, could have produced the above spectrum? Okay, we look at this. There is obviously a peak for the OH. Can you see the broad peak at around 3000? That's an OH. So that could be an alcohol or an acid. Now, I also have a peak for the C double bond O at around 1700. So this has an OH and acid of bond O, so it must be a carboxylic acid. A sample of butane 2 all was oxidized by heating under reflux with an oxidizing agent, and then the product was separated for IR analysis. Apart from the peaks due to the CC and CH bonds, which peaks would be present in the IR spectrum of the oxidation product? Remember, you're oxidizing butane 2 all. Butane 2 all, when it is oxidized, it would give what? It would give a keto. This is a secondary alcohol, so it would give a keto. So you, you will not expect a peak for OH at all. So you should actually have only a peak due to the C double bond O of the keto. Okay, which of these molecules does not absorb infrared radiation? Remember that we said molecules like oxygen or nitrogen that cannot change their polarity will not absorb uh, IR radiation. Now, the next question says, what effect does IR radiation have on the covalent bonds in water molecules? Remember that we said if water molecules absorb the IR, this is because the bonds vibrate more vigorously. Infrared spectroscopy can be used to distinguish different functional groups such as alcohols and aldehydes. State how this analytical technique is used to do this and explain the effect of radiation on the molecule. So we said, what happens when a molecule absorbs IR? The IR causes changes in the bond polarity. Different bonds absorb different IR wavelengths and the peaks obtained are then compared with the data booklet to determine the structure. Explain how IR spectroscopy could be used to detect whether butane 2 all has been oxidized. Well, we said you should have 
if it has been oxidized, it's a secondary alcohol, that means it will change into a ketone. So you should have the peak for the OH should disappear and a peak for the C double bond O of the ketone would appear. Carbon dioxide and water vapor both contain polar bonds. What effect does infrared radiation have on the bonds of these molecules? Remember that we said the IR radiation causes the bonds to change polarity. Three compounds can each have the same molecular formula are known to be alcohols. The IR spectra of compounds A, B, and C are shown. So he has three spectra and he's saying identify one feature common to all three infrared spectra, which shows that A, B, and C are all alcohols. Of course, when you look in that region of about uh, 3300, you will find that there is a broad peak there in all of them that indicates that uh, there is an alcohol or an OH group. State, giving a reason for your answer, if it is possible to identify each of these three alcohols. So can you tell if this alcohol is the primary or secondary or tertiary? No, we cannot. Remember that the IR cannot be used to determine if it is a primary or secondary or tertiary, since all alcohols have the same type of OH bond. Thank you for listening. That was the last uh, lesson in Unit 2, and we will be doing um, past papers, questions from past papers from now. Thank you.